right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be able to welcome Paul Rupert, who is over in Maryland. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing great. Uh, how about yourself, John? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing fantastic. And um, Paul is a, a sales strategist, growth consultant, advisor, uh, Global Point View Limited is the company, but he has a very, very deep background in in messaging and global telecoms. And that's what we wanted to talk about today, because suddenly my suddenly this thing I am being I am being um, prospected like crazy from people I've never heard of before. They either want to sell me something for Pipeliner or they want to buy my house. Uh, it runs the whole g gamut. So, Paul, um, let's get straight into it. Uh, so we were talking before you come on our air and I thought it was actually really fascinating, like the, hi the history of messaging, um, just the brief history of messaging. Sure. Uh, brief history, maybe about three minutes, but over the, the last uh, 24 years, I've been in the forefront of messaging business, uh, almost falling into it by chance, uh, starting off within a mobile network operator that is now known as AT&T. And that was in the late 1990s. Uh, and that when tech, that is when text messaging emerged as a native or inherent element of GSM radio formatted phones. So GSM stands for Global System Mobile, and that technology emerged out of Europe. And uh, then it made its way to the United States, which is where I had just recently joined a mobile network operator that started off as a startup with $3 billion invested just for the licenses, the uh, Spectrum licenses back then. So um, at that stage of the game, it was essentially 160 characters. And one of the powerful elements of 160 characters used that you could look at your phone, now called a feature phone, but back then it was just your mobile phone or handy, depending on where you might be around the world, uh, and look at it. And you didn't need to read that. You could glimpse it. Your brain would process it immediately. Uh, as well as it being an element of your mobile phone, which is a very has been proven to be a very intimate device that we all carry around uh, now, you know, upwards of six billion mobile phones handsets uh, will be in the market, I believe, by next year, and that exceeds the actual population of the planet. Uh, some things measures are it's easier to find a mobile phone than it is to find fresh running water around the world, believe it or not. Um, but the point being in all this is the pervasiveness of text messaging took off very quickly, led, I might point out, by uh, teenage girls yeah. in many respects in many companies, many countries around the world. Uh, a very good friend of mine has written a book, his name is Graham Brown, that looked at the emergence of text messaging and how um, the cohorts that drove it were primarily initially um, middle school students and teenage kids, as opposed to what was thought by the guys in the suits and ties in boardroom saying, well, the road warrior is going to really pick up on mobile phones because of its convenience, its untethered capabilities. But that was quickly uh, disproven by the dynamics of the consumer marketplace. And then yeah. move it's ahead one, over the class. One, one, thing, one thing, Paul, sure. I just, just interject anecdotally, it's kind of interesting that when text messaging first came around it was it took it was much more prevalent in Europe than here because I remember I used to being originally from Ireland I will I will go home in the early days and suddenly they're all texting me and I'm like what the heck why does nobody want to talk on the phone anymore but it definitely it definitely caught on much faster I would absolutely say, in Europe than the states yeah, there are two reasons for that. One, um, the native capabilities of the phone, um, because it was essentially picked up and developed in the European market first, uh, meaning mobile phones, GSM related mobile phones. The non-GSM uh, technologies, including CDMA or TDMA or IDEN, these are the various technologies available, primarily in the United States, did not have text messaging as part of their functionality. I happened to join a company that at its early stages that enabled that to occur. 
and kind of transform the messaging business. And as a result of that, especially in the US, by opening up that functionality, the market grew exponentially, uh, but we were lagging the behavior of the market in Europe because of the, the technology being implanted there first. And we're talking about the late 90s here. We're literally in 18 months in the UK, for example, studies show that uh, uh, the number of text messages grew by 20 by 200 percent. Um, there was also later on studies that showed that um, the purchase of chocolate and cigarettes went down and it was attributed to primarily middle school and high school kids who were no longer buying candy or buying cigarettes and instead were putting that money that disposable income, if you will, to buying a mobile phone and getting a mobile phone subscription and utilizing text messaging as a part of it. Or a lot of them, a lot of them in Europe are buying minutes and then buying yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Them. Exactly. Those are all prepaid and postpaid dynamics. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so with the advent of, of messaging, what, what happened then? Well, that, that description that I was just giving you up until about uh, the mid 2000s was based on what's called person to person messaging, mm -hmm. friends, families, etc. But around that time, a new development occurred where messaging was being applied in an enterprise related space or an application related context. So in that sense, now the things that we get that when you get a request from Facebook to prove who you are, you're getting what's called a a one-time password or two-factor authentication. Uh, you also get alerts and notification where there might be football scores uh, or reminders for you to take your medication or your prescription is available at the pharmacy, whatever it might be. That aspect of the business really exploded. And part of that is also due to spam and spoof control, um, meaning that uh, different initiatives started to take hold in the space. There's a, an entirely type of business, an entirely different type of business that controls that. Um, let's call it security of messaging. And most of those companies, as I say, that I've been involved in also provide security relative to spam and spoof control, which is what you were talking about. I'd like to buy your house and things like that. Now, in some cases, primarily in Western Europe, as well as the United States and, and many other countries around the world, you have an opt in functionality. So if you have gotten one of those unsolicited messages, you can just key in stop and they will automatically stop. And if they don't, especially in the US, it can be quite a heavy payment and penalty. I think it's four times the cost um, of, in terms of um, the penalty that might be accrued on this. And there are class action lawsuits that have, I've been involved as an expert witness, for example, for Facebook and um, Verizon in a class action that was driven by those kind of dynamics. Uh, so, so obviously then uh, this raises a lot of issues for people who are maybe start, you know, as I said, messaging in a sales context or prospecting yeah. or whatever has really started to take off. But what are the ramifications of that? And do people understand the laws related to it? Well, that depends on what country you're operating in. Um, you know, this in the United States for your audience, you know, that's essentially called TCPAP. Um, I telecommunications platforms. I can't recall the acronym, but it's TCPAP. Um, and so the best thing, if you are looking at this, especially if you're, let's call it a micro enterprise, mm -hmm. uh, larger enterprise have a fair amount of sophistication. They're usually approached by these, what are called CPaaS providers, which is an acronym for communications platforms as a service. Um, and that oftentimes is in conjunction with various types of advertising agencies that approach an enterprise. But now the utilization of text messaging is, is cascading down to micro enterprises. So when you get a notification, for example, from your hair salon uh, of a reminder of an appointment, that's essentially a micro enterprise capability that can be purchased directly. And you don't have to worry about how is it going to work. You know, you just look at the opportunity and there are various types of tariffs, meaning pricing schemes and models that allow you to do that. So depending on where you are, there are a lot of different venues and a lot of different avenues for you to be able to take advantage of this. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's that's absolutely correct, and it's and it's great. Um, but as I said, what are what are some of the what are some of the missteps or things that they people should be wary about so they do it properly? 
Well, you know, this just like anything else, you get what you pay for. If you are looking for a uh, low price solution, oftentimes those are are put forth by what are called gray market traffickers. What that means is that they're floating traffic into these various mobile network operators uh, without authorization, meaning nobody's paying for it. And this is all done through tricks inside the internet, if you will, and IP solutions. Um, what that means is that you may think that you are engaging in a marketing initiative to a whole group of prospects that you are trying to target, but then companies like mine who serve as the marshal in terms of the flow of this recognize that, wait a minute, this is coming from what's called a, um, a phone farm and the messages are coming in so fast that if it was an actual human being trying to do this, it might be 60 messages a second. Well, that's easily identified as fraud. Now you can then start sampling the content of the messaging and start looking for phishing initiatives and things that are pure fraud. So there are a lot of different technical techniques that we can apply to this. What it means is that if you're not paying for this kind of higher level functionality, and if you're looking for the lowest price possible, you might find that that effort that you've just spent, let's say $5,000 on or something along those lines, all those messages hit the floor, as we would call it in my business, meaning they were recognized as fraudulent, uh, unauthorized traffic, and we just cut off the, the delivery of those messages. And that's not done over a long period of time. That's done in seconds, how fast mm -hmm. the computers and the algorithms are applied to these kind of solutions. So if you're if you're if you're thinking of doing a a messaging initiative and maybe you're going to use a third party you know service or whatever, what are some of the things that you should look out for? Yeah, first and foremost, again, it kind of depends on what you're where you're coming from, but first and foremost is the quality of the messaging as related to the number of direct connections that the aggregator, as these companies are called, the messaging aggregator, has with mobile network operators. So if you are going to, and these are some of the higher profile players such as Cinch or Twilio or Infobip, uh, MessageBird, all depends on where you are around the world, um, you're looking at how many direct connections do you have within your network to mobile network operators. Then depending on the volume and the type of messaging you want to, if you're, for example, in financial services, you want a high degree of security. If you're looking for broad marketing, you want to have a look for, you want to have a, a, an understanding of throughput. Throughput is how many messages are being flown, are being uh, flowing through a uh, aggregator's network on a per second basis. So it all depends on what your needs are. And, you know, I've done research and worked with enterprises in helping them make these kind of decisions. You know, some of my clients include Facebook, Western Union Live Person, and sometimes interesting elements emerge. You know, I did a, a buying factor analysis asking a number of people, a number of executives in one company why they made this choice. One of the things that came up was likability. Likability is... Well, we're going to be dealing a lot with this company in terms of the technical implementation as well as the commercial modeling. Therefore, we want to be able to have an understanding that the people that we're working with are likable. Another one was referrals, which really blew my mind. I'm like, referrals. So your expectation is your aggregator is going to be making referrals on behalf of your company and your service. And they were like, absolutely. They're essentially going to be serving as a channel enabler for us. Mm -hmm. That had never come up in any other surveys that I'd been involved in, or even when I was selling these solutions. So it all depends on the type of functionality you're seeking, um, as well as the scope, the scale, whether it's national, regional, global, all these factors play out. Yeah, and obviously, uh, you know, they have pretty stringent laws in the, in the, in the European Union. Um, and in the US, as you said, if you, if you un send unsolicited texts, uh, you need to make sure you have an opt out. You may need to make sure that that stop functionality works. Yeah, that's right. You know, all you need to do is is type type in stop, and that should stop. And you know, then you can go into blocking. And if you're still getting stuff, you can always go back to the mobile network operator, because they have teams that look at this. Um, that is their dedicated job mm -hmm. to examine why is it, why is this being not being filtered out and then, you know, what's the issue behind it. And uh, I've been on one of these teams 
when I first started inside the mobile network operator business 20 odd years ago in terms of the security and the aspects. I mean, we had retired FBI agents who were involved in the process as well. Yeah, no, that's, that was that's absolutely... that was bill fraud. So that was a different dynamic. That was real money that was you know going out the door, so to speak. No, no, absolutely. So what are um, in the last few minutes, uh, where's all this going, Paul? Well, today, in terms of the migration and the evolution of the business, we're now moving into an area called CPaaS. And CPaaS stands for Communications Platforms as a Service. That's a fancy way of saying now these providers are enabling not only text messaging, but also voice calls, uh, as well as OTT messaging. So if you're using WhatsApp or Viber or Line or Kakao or WeChat, um, that's also part of their functionality and capabilities. And last, even legacy email being brought into it. And what's the purpose of all this? It's so that their end customers would be able to be communicated with and engaged with whenever, wherever, however, that customer wants to engage with you. So depending on what cohort and your age, your, you know, what, whether you're a trailing boomer like I am, or whether you're a Gen Z, whatever it might be, you can choose, with, you can choose the pat platform that you would like to use to communicate with an enterprise or even micro enterprises and businesses. And that's where we are today. The next phase, what I call the Nirvana state, is having a means to be able to tango in or tango out across all these platforms so that you might start off, let's say, on a video call, and it might migrate to a text call based on the complexity of the issue. And even further, you're starting to apply machine learning and artificial intelligence functionality when you reach out to, let's say, uh, Verizon or whatever, you know, you would be able to identify sentiment and intent of your customer, meaning almost reading your mind as to why you're reaching out to us this time. Yeah, no, that, that, that's fascinating. And I guess that bringing all that together, because, yeah, because if you're if you're especially if you're operating globally, I mean, you might be communicating with somebody, as you said, on a video call here, you may be text messaging, you may have to WhatsApp them somewhere else because that's what they're using in that region or whatever. So bringing it all together is, uh, yeah, that's quite nerva that's nirvana. That's nirvana. Yeah, sure. but going through it, then, you know, we live through the, the times where it's all fractured. Yeah. Where, you know, it's like, OK, today I'm talking to teams on somebody and then later I'm talking to WeChat and then later this and email, et cetera. It's it's it gets a little bit harried in terms of being able to manage all these. Hence, a platform that in, that um, enables a uh, consolidation of all these other different technologies. That's why there's so much interest, not only from the enterprises, but the consumers, but additionally, the investment community and looking at these companies and seeing this is where we should be investing significant amount of money. I mean, these companies have gone from literally what I used to call cockroach startups, like I was involved in 20 years ago, 22 years ago, and helped build out to today, these companies are generating a billion dollars in revenues. Yeah, look, it's, it's absolutely and more. fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, and it's, and it's happened so fast. Listen, Paul, this has been fantastic. And all of Paul's information is going to be below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, wow. well, I'm the president of a consulting company called Global Point View Limited. Uh, I can be reached at P Rupert, R-U-P-P-E-R-T at gpvltd.com. And I help technology and enterprise technology companies and enterprises uh, deal with text messaging and messaging initiatives, whether it might be security or whether it might be uh, advertising or any other type of use case and help put the two together in terms of taking this and then applying it in the context of your company, large or small. Yeah, this is fantastic. Listen, I would I would encourage people to go check it out. Uh, check out Paul because this is uh, this is an area that has, as we've heard, is only going to get bigger and bigger and more important. And uh, there's a lot of change coming, so I would encourage you to check out Paul. All right. Well, listen. Thanks again, Paul. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you, John. Have a good day. Thank you.